Hello everyone, this is Sarah, this is Sarah Laitois, testing one, two, three, okay, good, I've got both uh, platforms on, i got Spreaker on and Hubhopper, um, I have no idea what's going to come out of my mouth, but I have an idea that's meaningful again, and I should like to do a whole series this is one of my uh, one of my dreams right now. One of my pipe dreams right now is to um, and one of my pet peeves too, is to um, do a whole series on on uh, social media and how it affects us and how it's affecting the world and society. Um, my roommate told me that um, the powers that be were uh, using the internet maybe as a spy tool. Now, please don't quote me. Maybe we can study that further. But we all know that uh, we, we use the Internet to do many things, from paying our bills to keeping in touch with loved ones and maybe even attaining and acquiring a few new loved ones because uh, if we can communicate around the world, we can do anything and talk to anybody, right? Uh, well... I think we can have many, I mentioned this on another episode, I think we can have many parasocial relationships with one another with the internet. We can become stars, we can become someone's fan or fans, um, we can uh, look up to stars all the time, whether it's influencers or whether it's our favorite musical artist. And I have a whole bunch of those, including the late, the late Dan Fogelberg. And uh, Anatoly Bukrev, uh, the mountain climber, who is one of my other other heroes, and I'm mentioning him. I'm mentioning those people because it's useful. Just giving examples of uh, you know people that I'm fans of. Okay, am I getting on the topic, or am I going to keep uh, beating around the bush? Um, how can I talk about this? delicately because uh the person that I was dealing with recently um not not the other one you guys are probably confused right now cuz I've been dealing with many people lately online um in fact it it feels like many cuz it's really powerful but it's two people uh last week week before I was dealing with a parasocial influencer parasocial relationship influencer if you don't know what parasocial is please look that up on your search engine because if you're already on the internet you can do that and if you're listening to podcasts obsessively as I am you can maybe go on another phone and search that or search that while the podcast is playing in the background parasocial you know think of the word para like like para like paralyze yeah, that's just a word that popped in my head, don't worry. And social, parasocial. And um, it's basically a relationship we have with uh, people that are not available to us right right immediately. They're uh, influencers, they're stars. We can maybe make comments on their blog or on their YouTube channel, but that's about it. We're lucky if we can even get a howdy-do back. But it's kind of fun to uh, relate to them. It's kind of fun, and I had that, and I had to keep telling myself over and over again, Carol, or Sarah, you're not uh, involved with them. They have their own life, and you've got yours, and we've got to deal with reality. I had to keep reminding myself that every five minutes while I was dealing with this person on YouTube because I thought I had a really big uh, reaction to him, limerent reaction to him. That's another word. I will encourage you to look up on uh, your search engine, Limerent. It sounds like Limerick, but it's spelled A-N-T at the end, not uh, I-C-K. It's not Limerick, it's Limerent. It should be a Limerick, though, because it's a riddle. You know, look it up. You'll understand what I'm talking about if you look it up. Okay, um... I finally, uh, I set some boundaries with someone that I, uh, had looked up back in November, back during the holiday season. Um, from time to time, I, uh, I look up real people, believe it or not. I don't look up just people that 
that uh, tickle my fancy on YouTube. I look at people that I once was in touch with when I was younger. You know, once upon a time, back in my heyday when I was in my 20s, before I was in my 30s, before my second nervous breakdown, I digress. Um, I was kind of emotionally involved with um, a woman and a man. The woman was one of my friends, and um, she was uh, emotionally involved with a man. And uh, they were living together. I'm not sure how they uh, came up, came together, came about, how that came about. But um, I was going over to their house all the time. And I was throwing parties on her birthday and socializing with them. And we were talking about music and playing uh, board games. And just, you know, generally doing things. Watching TV together. Just having a so That was a social relationship. When uh, they're available you know, if not emotionally, at least socially, at least physically available. They're they're sitting there on the couch, you know, helping you watch a TV program or whatnot. And that was before the internet. That was before we had social media. I looked up this uh, person. I looked up this couple. I looked up my friend and him. And I found out, to my uh, chagrin, that she passed away. And um, according to her uh, her living companion... She might have killed herself. He said that uh, she went off somewhere to live with someone else, and um, they didn't love her, so she killed herself. Now that was um, that was uh, conjecture. We're not sure if that really happened or not. But uh, we talked yesterday, and it was because I asked him to call me instead of uh, instead of communicating me merely uh, with me merely on the internet. And, um, I have a feeling that, um, he doesn't want to be friends with me offline. And that gets me to another, another question. If I'm on social media, is he going to judge me by the work I do on social media? Because I do still use social media for my own purposes. I use, I use, uh, things like Facebook and, um, Instagram and TikTok to uh, talk about my mental wellness process and talk about how I'm coping with and transcending and daring to recover from mental illness on the internet. Those are the means I use. And um, I have, and of course I have this podcast, but I connect more on uh, social media. And um, I discovered him on uh, one of the socials, one of the social media, mediums, media. And, um, he was telling me, Jean Carroll yesterday, he was saying, why do you have all these followers on your, uh, channel? You know, on your, uh, on your socials, why do you have all these followers? And I said, well, they, uh, asked me to be friends and, uh, they were people of interest on the topic that I was talking about. I was talking about the Russia-Ukraine war, which is in my life purpose module. I... I addressed my uh, reaction to political stuff in my life purpose module, and I was talking about war and peace and Russia and Ukraine and uh, giving my opinion. And all of a sudden, all these young young people decided to uh, follow me on my social. What's up with that? And he goes, he goes. It just makes me wonder how your uh, how your channel looks. It makes me wonder how you're coming off. And to make a long story short, you guys, I told him. Please, Tom, not not his real name, please, Tom, uh, I don't want you to take it too seriously how I look on social media. Um, we've known each other um, for uh, about 10 years. And he said, but you, you, know, you know, Sarah, we, you, we've got this gap. You know, we haven't known each other from, uh, from uh, let's see, uh, 1997 to 2001. I'm just making up a time period, you guys. Because, again, I don't want to be sensation. I don't want you guys asking me questions like, oh, what about this? What about that? I'm just giving you guys an example. And I said, I said, listen, um, yes, I understand we had a, uh, I had a falling out with uh, her because she was abusive to me. And um, I do still look people up from time to time, especially during the pandemic. And your name came up and... Um, you know, you were her husband, you were married, and 
you know, what happened with that? Is everything, everything okay? And, um, why is she dead? You know, and how come you don't even know about it? Because he didn't know she was, she was dead. Uh, the, uh, summing up that I want to bring up, you guys, is we don't know about each other anymore because we don't have offline relationships with each other anymore. We're, we're always on social media and, uh, that's what I want to talk about. Um, social media is making us look like and perceive one another as people that have a bunch of, uh, bots and whores on our, on our, uh, social channel. And, uh, I've been advised myself that when I look at social media, it's like looking at someone on TV. You not, you are not seeing their real life. And I told, I told Tom here, the guy I looked up, the, the woman I looked up, the, the woman I looked up, this is not, this is not the, a cross section of me. This is me talking about my mental wellness process. These are the followers. And right now, from what you tell me, I'm thinking about unfollowing them because, um, you're right. I don't know these people and these people are, uh, God knows what they could be. They could be robots. They could be data mining me. God knows what it is. So I unfollowed them immediately and blocked them. And I said, okay, does, does that look better? And he said, well, it still looks a little like you're, you're, because you, uh, you talked to them, you engaged with one of them or two. And I said, yeah, I engaged one time. Ladies and gentlemen, what kind of conclusion are you coming up with listening to me right now? What are you coming up with? I'm, I'm addressing the listeners right now. What are you coming up with? I have an anxiety right now that Tom is judging me by my social media. That's why I told him how important it was to talk to me offline. And uh, the other the other anxiety I have is he did call me and we had this conversation about my social media. He was talking about my social media and I was trying to correct my social media channel and block people. I was spending more time doing that than we were talking about our life here in town, our life in real life. And that is really disturbing to me. And I still wonder if I'm ever going to hear from him again, you guys. I still wonder. So, um, you know, the conclusion I encourage you all to draw is this. What kind of life are we living on social media? Social media can be very useful when we are doing our work. It can be very useful if we have a brand name or a business. You know, granted it can be. It can be very useful when we're looking up stars and influencers. It can be very useful even if we're looking up friends and loved ones. But please... I don't want us to stop loving our loved ones or stop being friends with our loved ones because we see something on there that maybe we could clear up by calling each other or by texting each other or by even getting together. God forbid, meeting up and getting together. Social media in itself is not a bad thing, but be careful. It can be used for good or for evil. Be safe. Please be safe on social media, and please be safe in real life. Now I think my uh, my friend is judging me. I, I ended by asking him, Tom, do you still trust me? And he said, yeah, I trust you. It's just that your 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 page is looking really bad. And I said, listen, I cleaned it up. I did the best I could. And he said, yeah, but... And I said, Tom, God bless you just basically said that and he hung up the phone and he said I have to go to the store Carol goodbye and I don't know if we're friends anymore but you know what I'm glad I looked him up and I'm glad that I asked him if he was okay since his his uh, former wife passed away and might have killed herself I'm glad that I looked him up I'm really glad that I did but I feel really sad that there's a possibility we might not be able to be friends anymore because of what he saw on my social media. I'm sure you guys can think of dozens of other examples of how, how this might have happened to you. Please be safe. I cannot tell you enough. Please be safe. Till next time.